What's going on doll fans? It is your boy Dylan and I'm making another uh, quick video. I just made one um, going over and recapping the signings from yesterday but there was something that I wanted to mention in that video that I completely forgot to mention and then I found uh, another article with some good um, you know some good stuff uh, to add to the context of the signings that I also wanted to throw in so real quick the one thing that I forgot about is the NFL is delaying OTAs indefinitely because of the coronavirus uh, I will say that again OTAs organized team activities will be delayed indefinitely due to the coronavirus that's pretty fucking huge and so obviously that's something that we'll have to keep an eye on because that could massively affect the upcoming season um, anyway so real quick let's get into this other article that I found and it's um, the 20, uh, 2020 NFL free agents who won't live up to their contracts. Okay, the first one that they start with, they, uh, this writer had eight different players. And the first one he started with is Ryan Tannehill. I know a lot of people uh, hate Ryan Tannehill, so they're going to love this. But obviously, I'm going to disagree with it, and I'll explain why. But let me go through this. The deal, four years, 118, 91 million guaranteed. It is a lot of money to be sure. And they did give him a lot of guaranteed money. Ryan Tannehill was one of the biggest surprises of the 2019 season. After starting the season as Marcus Mariota's backup in Tennessee, Tannehill won 7 of 10 starts, led the NFL in passer rating, brought home Comeback Player of the Year honors, and led the Titans to within a game of the Super Bowl. They rewarded him for that run over the weekend. After reports circulated for some time that Tennessee could be interested in Tom Brady, the team instead locked in Tannehill as its long-term starter with a four-year pack that includes over $60 million in fully guaranteed money. To be fair, he did have an excellent season in 2019, completing over 70% of his passes and posting a passer rating of 117.5. And the reality of the 21st century NFL is that the going uh, price for a competent signal caller can easily exceed $30 million per season. But Tannehill's 2019 season wasn't just his best, it was his best by a mile. Not that far. But his passer rating last year was a career high by 25, 24 points. He topped 70% completing uh, passes a year ago, but he had exceeded 65% just twice before that. Um, but he always hovered sometime, or somewhere between like 62 and 65. He wasn't a young quarterback who blossomed in year two or, th or year three. During his sixth season stint in Miami, the 31-year-old was mostly mediocre. That six-year sample size is a heck of a lot more meaningful than the 11 games he played last season. So the reason why I'm saying that is one, or reading that part is for a couple reasons. One, to prove that I'm not biased and I am, am perfectly uh, willing and able to give you guys different perspectives. And in fact, I like it because it does give you different perspectives more data and more context to help you with your evaluations but let's note that that leaves out massively important context like for example he was the most sacked quarterback in the league uh during the four year stretch of his rookie season uh the first four years of his career so from his rookie season in 2012 to, to uh 2016 he was the most sacked quarterback in the league each of those years and or for that span not only that, but he had constant changeover on the on the uh, coaching staff, at coordinator, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The roster was garbage. They didn't have a, a good defense to get him the ball back. The offensive line was trash, hence being the most sacked quarterback in the league. And he didn't have very good skill players for the most part. Yet he still posted up damn good numbers. Several of his seasons, he had over 4,000 passing yards. He had was always over 60% uh, completion percentage. He almost always at least doubled. He was almost always two to one uh, touchdown to interception ratio. He constantly improved and he constantly proved people wrong when they said he couldn't do something like throwing the deep ball. Um, I, I mean, it's just, again, factually incorrect. And then that doesn't even include, again, all of the records that he has. He set a ton of Dolphins records that he still holds, including rookie records and an NFL record. So it's just not factually accurate whatsoever. Anyway, um, so, and I just got a breaking news alert. So there's going to be another signing for the Dolphins, but we'll get into that in a minute. So, Byron Jones is the next one that they feel will not live up to the contract. Five years, $82.5 million, $57 million guaranteed. 
Now, I'll, since there's some breaking news, I'll just read these. Since you already know my feelings on this, I'll just give you what this guy had to say. The Miami Dolphins entered the league tampering period Monday with the most available cap space of any team, and general manager Chris Greer wasn't shy. The Dolphins sent their rebuild into hyperdrive with a flurry of signings, the biggest being defensive back Byron Jones, who spent the first three seasons of his career in Dallas as a safety before switching to corner in 2018. The five-year mega deal makes the 2018 Pro Bowler the highest paid cornerback in the league. It's not that the 27-year-old isn't a good player. As ESPN reported, Jones allowed just 53% of the passes thrown in his direction to be completed in 2019, but the game's highest paid cornerbacks get the cheddar they do because they are difference makers. And in one important regard, Jones isn't. He's terrible at creating turnovers. In five professional seasons, he has two career interceptions. His last came midway through the 2017 season. You read that right, 2017. Add that to the Dolphins are already paying cornerback Xavier Howard over $15 million per season, and this signing is the makings of an expensive boondoggle. But wait, there's more. Next, Eric Flowers, offensive guard, Miami. Three years, $30 million, 19.95 guaranteed. Chris Greer is in the beginning stages of learning a painfully expensive lesson. More often than not, throwing a ton of cash at free agents in the hopes of quickly reversing a team's fortunes backfires. In addition to inking Byron Jones to a massive contract and signing linebacker Kyle Van Noy and edge rusher Shaq Lawson, the Dolphins also agreed to terms with guard Eric Flowers, who spent the 2019 season with the Washington Redskins. On the surface, the signings make sense. The Dolphins badly needed to juice up both the pass rush and offensive line. In 2019, the Finns were dead last with just 23 sacks, and the team was ranked 29th or worst in both run blocking and pass protection by football outsiders. Flowers played well in D.C., drawing praise from then-offensive line coach Bill Callahan after switching from tackle to guard. I think he's one of our better offensive linemen, and to make the switch that he made, he made it remarkably well, and it's a really good position for him, Callahan said, for Ryan Dunleavy of the New York Post. He's playing better in, in live, tight quarter situations. He's physical, he's been really good in pass protection, he's a strong square force in that respect. However, it wasn't that long ago that the 2015 number 9 overall pick was unceremoniously dumped by the New York Giants. And again, he was on a terrible Redskins team. The position switch appears to have suited Flowers, but $20 million in guarantees is a lot for someone who has had one decent season in five years. Then they put Kyle Van Noy on this list. Four years, 51, 30 million guaranteed. We're back to the Dolphins in another instance of a team overpaying a player based off of last year's performance. To his credit, Kyle Van Noy was an important part of one of the NFL's best defenses in 2019, racking up 56 total tackles and a career high six and a half sacks. That latter number had to appeal to Dolphins head coach Brian Flores, who knows Van Noy well from his time as New England's linebackers coach. But that familiarity combined with Miami's desperation to desperation in, to improve a pass rush that tallied a NFL low 23 sacks last year led to a reach. Prior to joining the Patriots during the 2016 season, Van Noy spent two plus disappointing seasons in Detroit. Beginning in 2017, he turned things up a notch, 73 stops and five and a half sacks that season, followed by a career best 92 tackles in New England's last Super Bowl season. But prior to 2019, half of his career sacks came in that 2017 campaign. He's never hit triple digits in tackles, and Miami just, du just doubled the salary of a player who will turn 30 less than halfway into a deal that averages $7.5 million guaranteed per year. Having a ton of cap space doesn't obligate a team to spend said cap space on the first day of free agency. Quite often, teams that engage on spending sprees on day one wind up with buyer's remorse. And, I mean, I've been saying that. We'll have to wait and see. But, as we're about to find out, there is some breaking news because the Dolphins are not yet done. So... Let's see, who did the Dolphins just sign? Well, according to multiple reports, defensive end Emmanuel Ogba has agreed to terms with the Miami Dolphins on a two-year deal worth $15 million with $7.5 million fully guaranteed. So it's not as big of a contract, but almost all of it is guaranteed. Again, same thing, and they're continuing to blow through cap space. Now, again, theoretically, on and at least on paper, it certainly should be an upgrade. Um, and our pass rush, but look, here's the thing though, and here's part of it with these signings and with everything that they're expected to do in the draft, especially if they go chasing a quarterback, the expectations for this team is going to be so immensely high and they have to live up to it. Otherwise it's going to be a complete, it's going to be viewed as a complete failure. If they don't, if they don't, I mean, they absolutely have to win more than five games next season. They have to at least get back to 
I would say, you know, close to 500 at the very least, if not having, you know, an actual winning season of nine plus wins next year. I mean, with with the with the people that with the guys that they're bringing in and the amount of cap space that they are blowing through and with what they are expected to do, expected to do in the draft and what they will likely do in the draft. I mean, they are literally putting immense amount of pressure on themselves to be way, you know, more successful than the odds give them, you know, the chances to get to. So, um, but, you know, we'll see how it turns out, man. I mean, again, on paper, at the very least, through two days of, um, uh, you know, free agency, or, well, I guess, technically, the, um, you know, tampering period, or whatever the fuck, I mean, look, the, you know, on paper, they definitely look to be massively improved. However, again, I mean, look, well, you guys know how I feel. You know, you guys know all the potential risks. Maybe they get hurt. Maybe, uh, you know, they don't live up to it. Maybe they're not as good as what they were paid. You know, I mean, they just literally blew through pretty much like all the cap space. Um, I mean, it's incredible. It's incredible. So we started off with um, over a hundred million in cap space, right? Over a hundred million before the signing of Emmanuel Agba. Okay, before that signing of 15 million, we had 57 left. So we almost blew half, blew through half of our cap space yesterday, and now we just signed another, not huge, not massive, but still decent chunk of a caps uh, of a of a contract. And I mean. The Dolphins are going to have like almost no money after they're done signing players and getting done with their, their draft class, etc. Now, of course, also, some of these players will not end up... I mean, these massive contracts that they're signing, you would expect them to make the roster, but obviously they're going to have a 90-man roster in training camp that's going to get whittled down. Um, so, you know, some of that cap space will be alleviated, but not likely these contracts... I mean, if they ended up signing any of these guys to these massive contracts and then ended up cutting them before the season, I mean, that's just a whole nother level of disaster. So, you know, anyway. Um, but also, again, I mean, this is, of course, another uh, defensive signing. So you can absolutely expect them to be big players on the offensive side of the ball for sure uh going into the draft again most notably my guess is is that they are going to trade away a sizable chunk of draft capital to go chase a quarterback all right guys that's what i got for you including the breaking news of the emmanuel agba signing and yeah so i hope you guys enjoy my videos and perspective if you do make sure you hit the subscribe button make sure you hit the like button make sure you hit the bell if you want to get the alerts share my channel and videos with your friends and family leave your questions comments and concerns in the comment section and of course as always make sure you follow me on twitter at dylan tartaro and with that i am out i'll see y'all soon fins up